Hello everyone, this is Svetlana from Marco 7. Thank you all for attending today's webinar, Capturing, Extracting and Successfully Converting Data into Structured, Usable Information through IDP, brought to you in partnership with Datamatics. Before we begin, I would like to cover a few housekeeping items. As you can see, at the bottom of your screen are multiple applications widgets you can use. All the widgets are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop space. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can submit them through the Q&A widget. We will try to answer as many as possible during the Q&A session, but if a full answer is needed or run out of time, we'll make sure to follow up with you in a separate email after the webinar. A copy of today's slide deck and additional help materials are available uh, in the resource list. We encourage you to download any resources or bookmark any links you may find useful. For the best viewing experience, we recommend using a wired internet connection and closing any programs or browser sessions running in the background. You can find additional answers to some common technical issues located in the help widget at the bottom of your screen. Please expect an email within two hours after the webinar with links to download the webinar slides and recording. At this point, I'd like to briefly introduce you to our moderator and host of the webinar, Shashi Bargava, EVP and Head of Intelligent Automation Solutions and Products at Datamatics. Shashi, it is over to you now. Thank you, uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to the seminar on IDP, Intelligent Document Processing for capturing, extracting, and successfully take, converting the data to be used in your downstream system in a usable information way. So today's agenda is basically, uh, we'll do the introduction of the panelists. I've got very experienced, learned panelists with me, and I'm sure with the panel discussions, having with them, asking them multiple questions, you will get a lot of insights into the IDP, which you can carry on with you, which will help you in your automation journey or the digital transformation journey in your organization. We'll cover a small summary, then we'll give you the industry perspective. Anil will be helping me out with the industry perspective, then we'll have the panel discussion, and I'll encourage all of you to please have your questions, post it out, and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. So let me go ahead and introduce my panelists. So first of all, let me talk about myself. I'm Shashi Bhargo. I'm the executive vice president responsible for developing the intelligent automation products and solutions at Datamatics. My passion is to develop the products and I do a lot of empathetic research using design thinking principles. We develop a lot of products which meets the customer requirements. With this brief introduction, I'd like to invite uh, Matthew Matthew, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Over to you, Matt. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Matthew Kelly. Um, I am head of digital and automation for Northern Trust. I am responsible for building digital tools and solutions for our 9,000 person workforce globally, as well as um, all the way through client experience and building out tools and solutions for them. Very happy to be here. Thank you, Matthew. <clears throat> really nice to have you on this panel, and thank you for taking your time for this. Over to you, Anil. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Shashi. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Anil Vijayan, and I'm a partner at Everest Group, which is a global research and advisory firm. So at Everest Group, I lead our automation practice globally uh, with you know, specific interest in IDP. It's uh, one of the areas which I've been following for the last several years. So excited to be here and, and look forward to the discussion. Thank you, thank you, Anil. Really nice to have you. And we've been interacting multiple times and I'm sure this session is going to be really exciting for all the people who are attending it. Uh, over to you, Usha, for your intro. Yeah, thank, thank you, Shashi. Um, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Usha Rao, and I'm part of um, Arch Insurance Company, which is a specialty insurance uh, company uh, based out of Pennsylvania here. And my background is uh, process improvement and uh, lean management. Uh, we lead uh, lean management and transformation uh, projects within Arch and we are on our journey to transforming our uh, insurance business. Uh, happy to be part of this uh, webinar. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Usha. <clears throat> a really warm welcome to all of you to this panel discussion. Okay, a little bit about the Datamatics. So Datamatics is a multinational company with about more than 10,000 employees. It's spread over six countries. We have delivery centers in the four regions, and we have more than 200 plus customers worldwide, with many of them being part of the Fortune 500. We actually, one line thing is we build a lot of intelligent solutions, which are basically for data-driven businesses to enhance their productivity, efficiency, and make sure their customer experience is par excellence. We've been working in this area for multi, many decades, developing a lot of solutions to increase the productivity, efficiency by doing digital transformation, business transformation for our customers. So that's a brief one. You can log on to www.datamatics.com for more information. Now I'd like to invite Anil, who is an industry veteran in the field of IDP, who basically coined the word IDP as well, okay, to give a overview of the market view, what are the challenges, what is the, how does the market look for it, what are the typical adoption of IDP in the market is. So over to you, Anil. Thanks, Ashi. So I'll, I'll begin by defining IDP. So intelligent document processing or IDP is essentially a tool that helps classify documents and further extract specific data elements from those documents. And, and it does so through the use of artificial intelligence. Now the artificial intelligence bit is important uh, because what it does is it actually makes the tool or the software more resilient to things like template changes. And B, it, uh, it, it also helps it learn and get better over time. So uh, if you were to look at it in more detail, uh, there are four stages to IDP. The input is typically uh, your scanned image of a document. You know, it can be an invoice, it can be a mortgage document, it can be something else. So in the first stage, the image is processed and the text is captured through OCR or optical character recognition. Then using uh, pattern recognition or AI-based uh, pattern recognition, the document is classified as one of say, an invoice or a mortgage document or an email, et cetera. The next step is extraction, where the AI algorithms help pick specific data points. So for example, you know, in an invoice, it could be an invoice number or an address or, or a vendor name and so on and so forth. Uh, in, in, let's say, another document, let's say, maybe a driver's license, it could be the name of the person, uh, other identification details, etc. The final stage is uh, data validation, where you can potentially apply a variety of business rules and validations before it is then passed on to downstream systems. Uh, now, naturally, this is an automation solution, so uh, there are several associated benefits with it. Now, on the automation front, it can improve uh, straight through processing rates. It can improve uh, productivity of employees and so on. Uh, it also brings down the cost of processing, you know, huge volumes of data. Right? And, and this is, again, one of the biggest challenges uh, that a lot of enterprise enterprises face today with, with the huge volumes of unstructured data. And then finally, there's also the business impact in terms of uh, things like, uh, say, better customer experience or you know, enabling new pro products through greater degrees of automation. So uh, the market has seen these benefits and, and keep in mind the IDP market itself is, is not that old. It's, it's a relatively new market, but these benefits are being, being brought to the fore and hence adoption is increasing rapidly. After a, a slight dip in 2020, uh, adoption has been rising and we expect a 30 plus percent growth rate in the coming years as well, you know, leading to a billion dollar spend on IDP product licenses alone by 2023. Now, uh, if we were to look at where IDP is being utilized, uh, we can look at these process adoption patterns. So initially IDP more or less started out with uh, finance and accounting and specifically invoice processing. But off late, we are seeing more demand actually come from industry specific processes in, in banking, uh, healthcare, insurance, and so on. Uh, there is still, of course, more scope for penetration in, in several other areas. And, and we're truly just seeing the beginning of mainstream adoption for IDP. 
some of it will also be accelerated as uh, the technology improves and and you know some of the solution trends that we foresee which include uh, things such as uh, you know specialized or pre-trained solutions which we can see on the left right so these are solutions which are already trained for specific use cases they come with pre-built integrations and hence are much quicker to deploy and much faster to ROI realization for enterprises. We also foresee improvements in fundamental AI technology, and this can help in two ways. Uh, so one, it will improve the accuracy of the solution, and two, it can also make it more data efficient from a training perspective through techniques such as you know zero shot learning, weak supervision, uh, use of you know generative adversarial networks, etc. Uh, finally, I'll also highlight that. You know, this is slowly but surely becoming an ecosystem play. So, which means that, you know, IDP is also starting to be used in combination with other automation tools, you know, whether it be robotic process automation or process mining or, or even systems of record, right? And on that front, we'll continue to see increased partnerships and integrations as well, which will uh, then lead to more end-to-end -end automation. All right, so with that, I come to the end of this part. Uh, back to you, Shashi. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Anil. I think it was a very good insight into the market, what's happening. And actually, we also do see the similar thing. It's like, you know, part of the ecosystem, IDP, part of the automation journey. If you look at the overall ecosystem of intelligent automation, IDP is playing a big role. And <clears throat> as we have seen, many of the customers which we talked to, they've done RPA implementation, which is like system to system kind of integration has been done, but there's a lot of data lying in those documents, which are lying in basically in petabytes, terabytes of data lying in the organization which they want to harness the data, use it and consume it in the different form or make some sense out of it. So that's where IDP we see are picking up quite a lot. And the second point which you made is very important also like if you look at the where many organizations where the volume of data is coming in, okay, we see sometimes in the service industry, we have seen some customers, the volumes are so high, it will not be possible for them to work manually and adhere this kind of a SLAs or timelines which they have for the business need. And that is where we're seeing adoption of YDP going extremely, extremely useful. It's becoming useful and people are adopting for it. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful insight which you gave us. So in the meanwhile, I think we'll just do a quick poll with the audience. Audience, uh, the, basically the question that you've seen, which Anil also mentioned is that there's a lot of semi-structured, structured document which is being taken care of by IDP, but now IDP is also looking at rough, honest structured documents. And there are a lot of mixed stories out in the market. Many people are attempting to try to extract the data from honest structured documents, but IDP tool in general are definitely going the direction where more and more tools are allowing people to do honest structured document as easily as possible. As Anil mentioned, recently the training is a big issue for the honest structured document. People are looking how to shorten the training cycle. So we just want to have a quick poll. Have you used IDP for extracting data from honest structured document? The choices are yes and no. Would appreciate if any one of uh, all of you please go ahead and uh, give the participate in this poll. In the meanwhile, I ask Matthew if you feel uh, how do you see the unstructured document extraction data from there going on? Any views on that to you, Matthew? Matthew, are there? Usha, maybe you can okay, give your yeah, views on it. I was going to jump in. Stuff. Yeah, maybe he's on yeah. mute. Uh, well, we have extracted data from um, structured documents, and we haven't gone the you know uh, route of uh, extracting data from an unstructured document yet. But uh, uh, can talk about you know several several areas where they can definitely use that to expedite the process or to bring in efficiencies, right? So, um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> 
Great. Anil, any, uh, any view from your side? Because you've been talking to a lot of people in the market, both from the vendor perspective as well as from the customer perspective. So what is the trend you are seeing on this? Uh, yeah, so, uh, so so the way I see it is, uh, you know, right now it is still uh, majorly semi-structured documents, uh, right, which are being tackled, so including the likes of invoices, uh, order forms, uh, to a certain extent, KYC documents, and so on. Uh, but uh, the more mature organizations are now moving to the uh, more unstructured kind of documents, and this includes things like contracts, um, you know, resumes and, and various other documents, right? That's a whole open area which really hasn't been uh, tackled or, or penetrated to a great extent. So the opportunity for driving efficiencies there is pretty huge. And I'm pretty certain that in the next uh, few years, we'll start to see a whole lot of adoption in those areas. Right? Yeah, I, I did want to add to, to this. So, so we have a couple of use cases that, that we have seen some good success in. One is around derivatives contracts. Um, so unstructured um, bilateral OTC type contracts for derivatives. We've also seen um, some use cases around our management agreements that our, our customers are writing. So these are contracts that are not on our standard paper, but things that, that our clients are providing to us that we want to structure in a way that, that we understand and that fit into our operational systems. Um, so we've had some, some proof of concepts around the IMA, the manager agreements, um, but some larger successes on the derivatives contracts um, looking at unstructured documents. Thanks, thanks, Matthew. Uh, so let's see what the audience feel about it and what we feel. Wow, so, okay. So I think 29% people are saying they've extracted data from unstructured document, I think, which is pretty much in the line what I think Anil was mentioning, Matthew and Usha, what you were saying. Yes, I mean, we see in the market that a lot of customers have started doing it. They've started experimenting it, but I'm like, yeah, around close to 71% they're not used so far. So I think that option is increasing. Same is structured, is structured, are being used in the IDP, those are very standard use cases. But if you look at the honest structured, I think that option is going up as we move along. Thank you audience for participating in the poll. So let me go ahead now and ask the first panel uh, question. And the question is, what are the typical IDP use cases for process improvement and digital transformation? So Usha, would you like to take a shot at it? Over to you. Uh, sure, sure, uh, uh, Shashi. Great question there. Uh, since I work in the process improvement and lean management area, very appropriate. Um, so, um, you know, before we start the digital journey or automation, um, process improvement journey, you know, takes into account the, the process assessments, right? So that, that's the first uh, first part of, you know, knowing what needs to be automated, et cetera. And uh, we do find a lot of areas that could be automated, um, even though we try to optimize the processes first and eliminate unnecessary activities. And then we want to go the route of automation. And uh, during the process assessments, we find tremendous opportunities, um, especially um, I work in the insurance industry, and um, claims management happens to be a humongous, enormous, you know, there, there's so much opportunity for improvement right there uh, because we deal with the claims on a regular basis. And um, especially for um, if you work in um, uh, PNC, you know, uh, specialty areas or um, disability area, life you may not find, you know, that many claims. Um, however, in areas where you expect, you know, uh, too many claims that come through the door, claims management is a tremendous, you know, uh, use case for adoption of both IDP and, you know, RPA, right? Um, so that, that should be part of the digital strategy mix for any company. Um, when you're considering your holistic opportunities and your capability development in the organization, um, I think if you work in the insurance industry, claims management happens to be one of the greatest areas. 
and billing and invoicing. You know, I think Anil and uh, Matthew also, you know, talked about from their different sectors. Multiple sectors can utilize this, you know, technology moving forward, right? I think if we do not embrace the technologies on a timely basis, we are no longer going to be the leaders in those spaces. And also, I can I can think of uh, numerous use cases. Uh, for example, billing and invoice I mentioned, and also client onboarding. We collect a tremendous amount of data from the clients, and if it is not managed and if it is not used for insightful, you know. Uh, decision making for risk management, etc. It's going to be a humongous space, right? I mean, we need to be extracting the data that sits there, that comes through the door, use it, extract it, and use it for decision making and you know risk management purposes. Um, and then another area that I can think of readily, Shashi, is um, um, the memo creation. Um, in insurance industry, some of the memos um, that are created takes a humongous amount of manual effort if you do not have the technologies in place. Um, it takes a lot of effort to kind of extract data from multiple documents, various formats, and then the data validation, compilation of this data into another format. It's, it's a huge, huge waste or an inefficient process, right? Um, these areas can definitely adopt and utilize um, the IDP, you know, the technology when it exists where it's going to make the employee experience a lot more better, right? So we are not only creating a customer, you know, we're not only delighting our customers, but also we are making the employee experience much better because um, a senior actuarial consultant or an actuarial, you know, manager may not be interested in, you know, extracting data and, you know, compiling and, you know, collecting data and validating that. Um, so in lean management, we consider that to be a non-value added activity, right? Um, numerous numerous uh, use cases and across the industry, I mean, healthcare um, is, is, is another area, another sector and banking insurance is still heavily, you know, paper-based to a greater extent. All these areas can definitely benefit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Usha. I think I completely uh, sync with you. We have also seen the similar kind of a thing, the cases which are talking about it in insurance, especially the non-life or the life, yeah. time of issuing the insurance policy or time of settling the claim policy. And with the competition increasing, insurance companies have to deliver it in a certain time period. There are SLAs coming in and they're taking more and more tougher SLAs to do that thing. And the only way to, to achieve that thing is adopting this kind of IDP kind of a technology. Because typically in claims, you get various kinds of documents. You have to extract the data and make a sense out of it. And what we have also seen in the claims industry is that more the data points you capture from the document, the better the decision you make it while settling that claim. Okay, so that's something. And to capture more data points, hundreds of data points from a set of documents, manually, it seems to be impossible in a way to meet the deadlines which we have. So that's very good. Thank you. Very good uh, insight, Usha. Uh, Matthew, any point from your side? Yeah, I, I was going to kind of follow up with the amount of data that's in there, right? So with manual data extraction, you may just be taking a, a few data points, name and address, right? But there's, there's so much more rich information, narrative information, context, that we, we, in general, have not been extracting because of the cost of doing so manually, right? So, so that's where we have seen additional value is, is by extracting information in context that we previously did not do at all. Um, the other thing on typical use cases, I think that's been spoken of quite a bit, but when you start to see unstructured documents, there's a real ripe opportunity for cost reduction, right? So the, the manual entry, no matter where it's happening, I've, I've had cases where we're scanning documents in and sending them to lower cost locations for someone to enter. That does not address the core issue, a fundamental issue of paper and context that's missing, right? Um, and from a risk perspective, anytime you have Kind of manual keying, rekeying, um, you you introduce risk 
into your process, right? Um, C and billing was, was mentioned. That's an area where we've done more structured. Um, we, we're pulling structured information off of documents. But like I said, in the case where clients are submitting their own contracts, finding that pricing, finding those um, constraints or contra contractual constraints in terms and conditions, pulling that out, we've had so many cases where it's been manually done only to have errors later on in the relationship, right? And we're going back and looking, looking at documents. Thank you, thank you, Matthew. Right. Really, a good one. So, Anil, over to you in case you want to add a couple of few things. Sorry. Yeah, no, so I'll, I'll be very brief. So, I think uh, both Usha and Matthew mentioned quite a few use cases. Uh, I think the uh, other ones which uh, come up apart from the ones mentioned, which are fairly common, are KYC is one. Uh, we also see underwriting, right? Essentially, essentially the underwriting analyst or assistant role uh, in, in that role, you know, IDP can be applied quite a bit. Uh, you also have mortgage uh, come in as one of the more common use cases. Uh, apart from that, um, you know, the, the more, or, or I would say some of the more uh, unstructured use cases which are coming through include, like I mentioned, emails, uh, resumes, social media feeds, contracts, and financial spreading and so on. So uh, quite quite a few interesting use cases on that front as well. Thanks, uh, thanks, Anil. Uh, thank you, and now let me move on to the next question for the panel. So what are the, some of the biggest roadblocks faced by companies along their automation journey in adopting IDP? I'd like to add this question to Matthew. Matthew, you have implemented many of this automation projects in your experience. So where do you see what are the biggest roadblocks? Over to you, Matthew. Man, oh man. So, so a few. One is recognizing the opportunity, right? So some, sometimes with our subject matter experts, they aren't aware of the more sophisticated tools and technologies. And they think, oh, this is too hard. Oh, you can't do anything with, with this unstructured document. Or, you know, we've outsourced it. So let's forget about it. I think the, the first roadblock is really just our awareness of modern day tools and capabilities. Um, the second roadblock I would say is building relationships with those firms and vendors that can help prove out some of these concepts that we can partner together and say, how can we resolve this unstructured document or this structured document that it, we don't see a lot of volume in, right? How do we, um, deliver greater value from the context of this information. Again, it's, it's mindset, it's capability, it's awareness, it's relationship. And then I would say, you know, along that journey is the human in the loop, right? So, so the same team or person that may have been entering data manually may not be the team that would be validating or being in, in the loop. Um, and it, I guess one other is is training some of these models, right? So having the right skills and expertise, how simple are the models to train the interface, the experience of training the models, um, I think is, is an area where we have demand that some of our partners can further develop. But um, I'll leave it there. It probably sounds insurmountable, but I, I don't think it starts with mindset and how you approach. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. I think that was true. I like thing. Uh, what you just mentioned, the points, even while developing the product in Datamatics also, we do focus. And as I mentioned, I do a lot of empathetic research, sitting with the users, actual users who are going to mm -hmm. use it. You mentioned HITL. It has to be extremely intuitive. User interface has to be very, very, uh, what do you call, intuitive, adaptive, very efficient for the users to get the right output from them. Okay, and that's where I think while we develop the product in the IDP, we put a lot of effort in doing that research. It's not just more of a technical challenge, it's more of understanding the user, what's running in the mind of the user and developing it. And yes, exactly, change request is the most important change management in the company. I think that is something, one of the roadblocks which we see if everybody is not aligned, these projects are not successful. Over to you, Usha, any views on this? 
Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't agree more on the the change management issue, and I know not exploring enough opportunities or understanding what exists, right? So understanding newer capabilities definitely help, and you know, building relationships with you know vendors and you know piloting uh, a few use cases can also help. But some of the challenges for um, you know some of the technology investment is the funding, right? So most likely you will hear we do not have the funding at this point for this particular project. And, um, and some of the competing priorities that they may be pursuing may, you know, you may hear that because they would have um, funded a different type of a project. And, um, and to me, the, the most important one is uh, the lack of process assessments, right? So the challenges is, you know, sometimes they hear that this technology did not uh, do well or it failed, uh, simply not because the technology itself was bad, it was because the assessment was not, not done and also the business need was not understood, right? Uh, so those are some of the factors that can uh, contribute to the, the failures or the challenges that uh, we usually face and uh, because when you consider technology, I mean, it's it's really integrated, right? It's people, process, and technology working together, right? So you need to definitely, I think you brought up that point, uh, we need to understand what the user wants and, you know, uh, how it needs to be customized, et cetera. And uh, uh, outcomes of, you know, the, the results, and sometimes you deploy a technology, but it's not well understood because you do not uh, uh, have training, you know, funding for that. You did not train the users. And also you can, you can uh, you know, find a lot of resistance when changes are brought in. Change management becomes an important information. Like you have to be extremely proactive in terms of identifying um, your uh, supporters um, and then make them the champions and then you know, move forward. So uh, technology, you know, uh, challenges abound, but you know, there are ways to kind of overcome that as well. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, thank you, Usha. You're absolutely right. You know, getting a buy-in from the users, bringing the champions. There are some user champions who really make sure that the other users adopt it. Otherwise, yes, whatever better, the best technology you can have it. If it doesn't get adopted, you don't get the desired results. Thank you for that, Anil. Any short bites from you? Yeah, so I mean, uh, agree with most of what has been said, right? Primarily, what we see is, you know, one is the issue with understanding the solution, knowing the solution, and also understanding the solution, right? And that can go on either end of the spectrum. You may think that it, it can't do anything. You may think that it's a silver bullet, right? So that uh, we st still see those extremes. Uh, training data is another one. Change management is another one. But uh, let me also just throw this in. Um, so talent also can be an issue, right? Particularly if you're attempting to do it in-house and not necessarily relying on a product. So in that case, you know, having the right kind of talent, uh, you know, machine learning engineers or data scientists, et cetera, to build that kind of a solution uh, and, and to retain those folks, uh, that also can be, can be an issue. Yep. Actually, you're right, Anil. Uh, the talent is a big issue in terms of automation, as we have seen with the many customers. And that's where you see many of the products which are coming in the space of RP and IDP, we call them LCNC, low code, no code. So dependence on the so-called the programmers or the developers is reduced. Even a lot of business users can go and configure that thing. Even we are seeing trends like in the EIML model training, also you don't need to have a hardcore developer or a programmer. Business users can go train the system, train the model pretty quickly and use that. Thing. So that's a big change we're just saying it. Thanks, uh, thanks, Anil. So let me move on to the another short poll for the audience. Uh, would love you to participate in this poll. What is the field level accuracy you have achieved using IDP? This is the kind of question we always face when we go as a vendor, when we take the product, every product they ask, what is the accuracy you are getting it? Okay, and accuracy is sometimes it's usually defined at the field level. So in a particular document, if you're trying to extract 30 fields, so out of 30 fields, how many you extracted correctly, how many you got it by the system, by the after training the system, or setting the business rules, or setting up the contract, the IDP for it. 
So I'd like you to participate uh, in this thing. In the meanwhile, uh, Usha, Matthew, Matthew, any view on this? What do you think in the terms of IDP? I mean, we've seen some very high level field accuracy, right? We've seen 90 plus, 93, 94 um, in, in some of our derivatives contracts. Um, you know, one of one of our use cases, which I, I didn't mention, was kind of going back and and pulling old contracts and old documents for audit purposes, right? So we need to be able to scan in a massive amount of data and then start to extract contracts or things that, that may require an intervention or data privacy updates, whatever it might be, right? contracts that require an intervention. And even in those cases, we're seeing, you know, field level accuracy, 92, 93%. So I, I, I have not um, experienced accuracy as a roadblock or a challenge, um, but the experience in, in training and building those models, right? Um, and again, I say experience. It's not the tool itself okay. is, is that's incapable. good yep thanks matthew usha any view on you what kind of a accuracy have you got in your projects yeah there were very little projects that had utilized the idp but you know i can i can definitely say it was closer to 80 percent because we had also built in the manual interventions needed uh, from okay. um, either an underwriter or an actuary to kind of review the process, right? It was in its infancy. So um, mm -hmm. there is always a little hesitance in accepting, you know, 100% of that result, right? Um, so I would say around, yeah, uh, about 80%. Okay. But as we progress Anil, and as we mature, yeah. Sure. Yeah, Anil, what do you think? What do you hear from your customers? What percentage they are getting it? Yeah, so that that can that can vary widely, right? <laughs> so uh, it it also depends on you know to to what extent you've trained it, what is the complexity, what are the data types, etc. So, but but when you're talking about let's say semi-structured documents, um, you know, achieving high rates of accuracy uh, isn't that difficult. Uh, when it comes to more complex uh, unstructured documents with different data types, for instance, you know, talking about tables. And, nested tables, et cetera, then the accuracy and, and you know, free flowing text, the accuracy tends to go down a little bit. Uh, yeah. But then, you know, it's a different construct which is being employed there because typically what happens is uh, particularly if you're talking about un completely unstructured text, you still have a human review it anyway. Um, so, so it's a productivity improvement as opposed to complete straight through automation, which is being aimed for there anyway, right? So yeah, so yeah. I, I think accuracy needs to be put in context of what you're also trying to do and achieve. I completely agree with you because yes, people look for it, uh, uh, the accuracy, and mostly they try to look at the STP. Many of the users want 100% STP, which in the current technology, the current level of training and other things, the ready solution, as you mentioned, predefined solutions. That is something you have not seen yet. So the very it varies in the context, varies kind of the complexity of the documents. So let's see what the audience are saying. Okay, so we got a mixed result here. Okay, the ten percent people saying above eighty percent, eighteen percent saying seventy to eighty percent. I think it's with respect to their all the different documents they've got it. And about 39% saying less than 60%. I think mostly that must be with the really complex documents. And 33% between 60 to 70. And I think these numbers are primarily before the HITL thing has been done. Because post-HITL, obviously, the accuracy will be high. Uh, thank you, audience. Thank you, everyone, for participating in this poll. So let me move on to the next question, looking at the time as well. So the next question is to the panel is, how can IDP be leveraged for innovating new products or enhanced decision making? So one, we have heard that, yes, people use it to extract the data, like typical use cases of invoice, KYC, claim processing. But can we use this IDP technology to innovate the new products, make your decision making much more intelligent, much more faster, much more accurate? 
So that's the question. Over to you, Anil. What do you think on that? Yeah, so uh, definitely, I mean, there are, uh, so I think some of it is also, you know, limited by one's own imagination in some ways, right? Uh, because, you know, you can find use cases or you can find places where uh, there have been uh, implementations of IDP or, or even other automation solutions, which have led to top line impact, right? So, uh, for example, is one case of, uh, or actually there are multiple cases, but at least one case of a bank I know, which was able to target a new customer segment simply because uh, they were able to automate a lot of their processes, right? This includes, you know, onboarding, um, credit risk mechanisms, et cetera, et cetera. So essentially, uh, earlier that particular customer segment, they couldn't service or they couldn't target profitably. With automation, it actually enabled them to do it profitably, right? Uh, there's another one which comes to mind. Uh, so again, uh, this might seem pretty simple but you know the, the top line impact actually was meaningful so there was a hardware company uh, which simply used to not bother to follow up when there were small renewals pending right but again with automation it just became much more cost effective to do that follow up uh, for you know renewals on time and that led to considerable difference in their uh, cash flow and renewal rates and so on so uh, those are a couple of examples where we're talking about, you know, top line impact, right? Uh, in terms of uh, adding to the decision making or enhanced, um, let's say, intelligence coming in, uh, I think there are quite a few, again, on that front as well. So uh, I, I think several banks are using IDP for uh, anti-money laundering as well, or, or, you know, at least for negative news reports and anti-money laundering. So again, uh, through IDP, you can uh, crawl through the web much more effectively and pick out the relevant pieces of news. And uh, this is uh, much more efficiently or effectively done uh, through an automated solution as opposed to having, you know, several humans actually manually going through this kind of thing, right? So much more input into uh, what ends up being a much more informed decision. And, and I'm sure there are other use cases on that front as well. Thanks, Anil. Yeah, actually, yeah, we have also seen one of our customers like in a claim processing. Okay, they were initially capturing a lot less data points, just about 30, 40 data points before making the decision. It was typically in health claim area, and they have to give decision pretty quickly for those cashless transactions in the medical service providers. And with the IDP usage, they could capture almost 400 to 500 data points. So the engine which they were using to make the decision the claims, they could really... Uh, make good decisions. I would say the quality of the decision was good, both in terms of whether it's insurance company or the claim, the patient. So that is something, yes, we have seen uh, IDP helping and really making decision making faster. Over to you, Usha, any points from your side? Yeah, absolutely. Just to follow up on, you know, what Anil mentioned a minute ago, um, renewal strategies can definitely utilize I mean, you know, you can develop a, a better, robust, you know, renewal strategy based on the data points that you gather, right? Um, so we've done that in the past where um, getting the right type of data to kind of make the decision versus, you know, spending numerous time, you know, validating or uh, cleansing the data, right? So the, the underwriter or the actuaries are able to kind of make the decision quicker with those data points uh, that are readily available to them. Um, you know, very many uses of this because, I mean, it's it's not just the extraction and, you know, collecting those data points, right? Using that for making intelligent, you know, decisions and, you know, getting those insightful information to kind of see whether you want to branch out into your new product, you want to launch a new product line, et cetera, and you know, explore more market opportunities, varieties of ways to kind of use that. So. Okay. Uh, thank you, Usha. I think I'm just looking at the time as well. So let me take the last panel uh, question. So which is how can RPA and IDP have an effective use and match within your digital strategy? Basically, we have seen a lot of combinations where IDP, RPA, a lot of organizations have matured in the use of RPA. They've got hundreds of bots running in their organization, connecting system to system and taking structured data and 
playing around with the target uh, systems. But with the use of IDP, I think it's taking it to the, taking them to the next level, which I think all of you mentioned that you need to harness the data from the documents. So Matthew, what's your view on that? Yeah, um, one, one effective use we've had has been leveraging information that has been extracted from documents to inform how uh, a bot or an automation might respond. So if, if the value of the contract is over X million or X dollar amount, then send it away. If it's under Y dollar amount, then straight through process, right? So those kind of bits and pieces of information that we can extract from documents are really informing how our bots operate and operating with greater intelligence, right? So it's not just kind of, you know, dumb. We're sending everything down one, one direction, but you're building an intelligent workflow based off of contextual information that you pull from a document. Right. Um, so it has been really kind of a match made in heaven for us. Right. Um, because everything is driven by our, our management agreement. Right. And in, in the banking space. Um, so that that really informs KYC process. Right. It informs client onboarding. It informs which systems that we're interacting with. All of those. Things. Great. Uh, thanks, Matthew. Usha, any thoughts on this from you? Yeah, so I, I, uh, when, I, when I look at the digital strategy of a company, it needs to be part of the overall enterprise-wide you know, strategy, right? So digital strategy plays a significant role these days um, because you may have different levers, you may have lean management and you know, digital strategy could be another lever that you can utilize. And uh, you know, uh, outsourcing was you, used to be one of the levers that you know companies utilize, but maybe it's it's gaining less popularity these days as wages are equalizing across the globe, etc. Right? Uh, but I think having a mix of you know um, these technologies um, in your um, you know product mix or in your um, uh, technology uh, landscape is going to be um, extremely beneficial for companies, right? And um, a very competitive uh, landscape um, across the globe and uh, uh, smaller, um, you know, folks are able to kind of, you know, uh, rise to the top. And uh, if you want to be competitive, I think it's, it's imperative that you embrace the, the technologies that are available and uh, make your digital strategy one of your priorities, right? Um, so having a mix of things and not necessarily just focusing on one in the past, like a lot of, lot of um, mm -hmm. improvements were done or companies undertook a legacy or their core system improvements. You, you ended up being you know, extremely costly affairs, right? And some did not work. But having a mix of this digital strategy with, you know, um, IDP and you know RPA in that in that you know mix uh, would definitely be uh, a great strategy for companies that are trying to be more competitive and to grow and scale. Great, thanks, Usha. That actually really matches. I think uh, we have seen people that are expediting their digital strategy or digital transformation in terms of basically their existing businesses to be digitized or to be transformed using various technology and that has got expedited in the, during the COVID days. Because of the COVID, we have seen a lot of uh, traction, the projects which were used to be like, you know, a cycle of six months to eight months that become in the weeks, six mm -hmm. to eight weeks, because people wanted to do it to take care of the load and all kind of talent challenges, I think, which Anil also mentioned. Okay, people have to do and the kind of volume sometimes you get and the kind of SLAs which you have, you have no choice but to go and adopt this kind of technology. Anil, any view from your side? Yeah, so from my perspective, so, you know, obviously different things are good for different purposes, right? So RP is very good when it comes to transactional processes which are, uh, which deal with more structured data, right? Uh, but then, you know, as we go into more judgment-oriented processes and uh, more unstructured or semi-structured data, that's where you would start to need some of these AI-based tools. Right? And that, you know, IDP is one of them. 
conversation here is another one. Uh, so it, it, it's pretty much, uh, I would, you know, obviously encourage uh, anyone who's thinking about automation to think about it uh, holistically and uh, as far as possible achieve as much as automation you can from an end-to-end -end perspective. And the way to do that is to use these uh, different tools for different situations or different tools for different contexts. Right? So yeah, IDP and RP in that sense definitely goes well together. Yep. Uh, thanks, Sanal. I think uh, that was the questions for the panel. I think uh, I'd like to move on to the Q&A session. I think I can see a lot of interesting questions coming from the audience. So I think that the first question I'll take it is from Noor. How does the intelligent document processing help reduce risk? Okay, so excellent question, Noor. Uh, over to Matthew, Arusha, anybody wants to pick that question? If Matthew wants to go first, it's fine. Otherwise, you can take it. I think we shall go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so how does intelligent document processing help uh, helps reduce risk? So um, uh, I'm going to speak from the you know insurance industry's perspective, right? So uh, when you're dealing with a lot of lot of numbers and if you have extensively manual processes all across from an entry end perspective, right? Um, you are investing a lot of time and effort in terms of, um, gathering that data, then uh, extracting that and, you know, manually inputting that into a different format, for example, an Excel spreadsheet, right? So oftentimes, you know, these can lead to human errors. So that's, it's very, very common, transposing of numbers, you know, entering numbers in a, uh, you know, in a hundred tab, you know, Excel spreadsheet, you could be entering it in a wrong tab altogether, um, leading to results that can be, um, you know, not so good for the overall outcome of the, the business results, right? You know, these are inherent risks and, you know, you can sometimes see that from the audit findings or from a compliance perspective. We need to have controls to ensure that these types of human errors are uh, prevented or, you know, preventative measures need to be taken. So um, Thanks, yeah. these are, these are some of the areas where you can definitely use yeah. the technology to you know, uh, reduce yeah, absolutely, risk. absolutely right, Usha. So I can add one or two things. We have seen many of our customers using IDP, okay, because uh, the data which you're getting it from the IDP systems, it gets validated, as Anil mentioned in the one of the uh, initial slides. The data gets validated. The correct data comes in. If you get the correct data into the system, okay, because in data entry the fatigue comes in, and sometimes the data entry error also happens. The wrong data leads to the different kind of a thing. So that is one way of doing it. And second, a lot of risk management compliance also happens because the technology provides you that thing, which helps you reduce the risk because you get much more data to it. Uh, thank you, Usha. This, uh, I'll pick up the next question. This is from George. Okay, is IDP a kind of ETL process? Okay. So let me take that question, George. I don't think you can call this an ETL as you do in an enterprise data management or dealing with the data when you're moving data from one system to other system. Basically, IDP is uh, basically taking, it's a cognitive capture, capturing data from the various type of documents which you scan it. It could be PDF, it could be JPEG, could be images. To try to extract data from this kind of a documents and that is what is called IDP. I hope I'm able to answer it. Otherwise, you can shoot a mail and we'll give you the detailed answer for that. I'll move on to the next question. It's a very interesting question. Maybe, Anil, it's for you. Uh, what pricing models are available for an IDP tool? What kind of a pricing models work with the IDP tool? Over to you, Anil. Yeah, so uh, today, the most prevalent one that we see in the market is uh, a per page or a per document kind of pricing model uh, so you know it's it's typically license space but you know there is a kind of a per page uh, construct so it's essentially transaction based but uh, we have also seen a few use cases where there are uh, outcome constructs so you know it may be 
by per document accurately processed or per document uh, you know maybe gone straight through or, or something of that sort but uh, I, you know honestly those those are still limited and uh, also it requires you know maturity on both of the both the part of the buyer and the service provider for those kind of uh, let's say more um, progressive pricing models but uh, yeah to answer your question largely today it is uh, per per page or per document pricing thanks uh, thanks anil uh, i'll move on to the next question from lloyd does idp have the ability to identify common data versus sensitive slash confidential data that's an excellent question okay so let me try to take a shot at it uh, lloyd idp tools usually capture data from the documents many tools provide you a feature of redaction okay even while doing hitl or certain data which is of the confidential nature it can be redacted it will be only shown to the user authorized users can see part of the data others cannot see that i hope that uh, answers your question i'll looking at the time I'll, i think we have a lot of questions out here but i'll pick up two more questions okay one is uh, how easily can we idp tool can be integrated as a part of ecosystem with the other systems so matthew can you take that thing or usha absolutely so the the more sophisticated idp tools have apis right so so effectively you're just calling on apis to to in, invoke an action or scanning a document or reviewing a document and that can go hand in hand with data platforms it can go hand in hand with rpa tools it can go hand in hand with other analytical capabilities that you might try to build off of document understanding so it's i would say in most in most cases the tools are fairly mature and sophisticated and leveraging apis okay thanks matthew so i'll just have a last question and uh, the question is how do you evaluate a idp tool with respect to the business benefit usha maybe you can take this um no uh, sure as i mentioned before um i i think the process assessment plays a significant role in determining what type of tool um selection that you want to have right um based on the business need and also the expectation set forth and also in alignment to the organizational strategy um you want to be selecting the right tool for the right uh you know uh problem solving situation right you may you may have uh extensively manual work that uh is not an efficient way to go by so you may want to kind of consider uh those aspects and uh choose the right type of tool for the right problems right you do not want to simply onboard a new new tool uh because you know another competitor did that but based on your you know business need and the situation um you you may want to embrace that yeah uh thank you usha i think we are almost on time uh, thank you usha matthew anil all three of you for joining today for this an excellent uh, very uh, insightful uh, interactive uh, panel discussion thank you very much back to you saitlam thank you shashi and thank you all for sharing these great insights indeed as shashi just mentioned and for being so generous with your time today just a quick reminder to look out for an email and within the next 2 hours with links to download today's materials and if you would like to learn more about datamatic services you can book a meeting directly with them through the widget book a meeting we'd also like your feedback so if you can take a minute to answer our very brief survey that will pop up on your screen at the end of the session that will be very much appreciated on behalf of datamatics and marco sevens webinars we would like to thank you all for joining us today and we do hope that you will be listening in at our next webinars Thank you. Have a great day everyone.